Welcome to the Mortgage and Mindset in Minutes podcast, and I'm your host, Tiffany Rose, where you'll get a little on mortgage and a lot on mindset. How you doing? Yes, One of my yes. favorite people in the world. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm so excited to really, 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 uh, uh, you know, this interview, and actually, I'm recording right straight in and through my 4K camera. Yeah. On this side also. I love it. So I can provide you the whole recording from this angle also. And if you want to mishmash or do some, you know, special things. <laughs> I I love it. You know what? Be- before we jump into it. Well, I guess we can just jump into it because. Yeah. I it's want, recording. Yeah. I want to get this out to the masses. So Vinny Chopra. So let me ask you. There it is. Yours is down below. So I could do it like that. So this way it's kind of like, you know, almost the same. Yeah. Mine, I yeah, love your background. Oh, thank do it you. with it's passion or not at all. I love it. Very nice. Very I know I'm beautiful. all black and white today. I didn't actually mean to be, but that's okay. It goes with <laughs> the, yeah, I'm matching my, my wall decor. So super. Vinny, smile, Chopra. I'm so happy to be talking to you today. We talk often in our mastermind and we're just kicking butt with all of our stuff. We're implementing and being innovative, right? Marketers, educators, all these great things. But there's a few things we talked about the other day on the mastermind that I wanted you to touch on. But before we do, your book, Positivity Brings Profitability, is so money, I can't even tell you. Oh, I'm you. almost done re- reading it. It's a gem. It was sitting there and I would flip through it a little bit and I'm like, okay, wait a second. This stuff looks like gold right here. So I really started like honing in on it. I can't even tell people listening and watching this right now how important it is to get Vinny's book, which I'll tell you, I'll tell you guys how to get a get a copy of that. But being serious, one of them that uh you a piece that you said was when you're presented with an opportunity, all you say is yes, and then figure out and learn it later. And I had a huge opportunity about three weeks ago, and I was sitting there him hawing about it. And I was like, I don't know if I'll be able to do this. I don't know if it's, what if it doesn't work? What if I have to spend all this money? And then, you know, I can't hire the right people. To, all these what ifs. And the yes. girl was just like, all you should be saying right now is yes. If Russell Brunson or Tony Robbins or Dean Graziazzi was sitting in front of me trying to help me right now and convince me to jump on something that's gold mine. Yes. And, and I was him on, he'd probably kick me out of here. And so I was like, okay, okay, yes. I'm just going to say yes. And it's so crazy because then I read that in your book and it's just awesome. I can't say enough about it. So uh, Tiffany, would... you're amazing. You're yes. totally amazing. Just a bundle of energy and such. I mean, you know, when we had lunch together and Bo has known you for so many years, I didn't yeah. know. And it's such fresh, you know, breath of air to come in the mastermind. And I really believe that. I think all our souls, we get together the energy, the light. I really believe in that. When we get together, we come together for a bigger purpose. And that purpose started just a few months back, you know, between four of us, yeah. you know, and you and Bo and Mario and I. And I think I'm so happy that you really took that opportunity, you know, to say yes. Uh, yes to that. <laughs> yeah. And as you know, you talk about in your book, you know, money is currency, money is energy, it's an exchange of energy. There's nothing wrong with having money oh. or wanting money. If you're a crappy yes. person without money, you're probably going to be a crappy person with it. But if you're a good person, you're going to be able to make an impact on more people the more yes. money you have. And that's exactly what you're doing. I'm just so I, happy. I just so. want to say that this morning I was also on another interview. The key thing is servant attitude. We got to be always looking for a win, 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 all wins situation because whatever product we have, we want to have the desire to put it in millions of people's hands because they will grow their businesses higher and higher. And that's what I see your course. You know, that's how I see my course and other people because they have a money comes second. They, it comes second. But if we are able to just have the right attitude and drive 
and do everything in our possible to share the skills, share as much with abundance attitude and mind shift our serving you know, clients or investors in my case and brokers and all. The key thing is to really give them the best of the best so that they could take it and move to the next level in their incomes and business and everything. Absolutely. So I want to jump into that because you have a lot of ways that, you know, the the audience people listening, there might be opportunity for them to get in and invest and, and do things. So tell me about like what you kind of want to hone in on for this, because we talked about it a little bit on the mastermind. I was like, oh, we got to talk about that. So tell me what your latest creation or venture is. I know you got lots of things <laughs> with like well, getting investors be- and Money totally, together. totally. You know, my life has changed. Everybody listening to us, if we know a little bit, uh, I came from India, you know, very humble beginnings and a mechanical engineer. I always want to be a mechanical engineer and came to USA to do my MBA, Master's in Business Administration from George Washington. We just had a President's Day. So I was trying to research. I'm a very inquisitive guy. I said, why do we have President's Day, right? And then George Washington, the university I went to, I realized that's to really give special, you know, tribute to president, uh, two presidents, Lincoln and George Washington. And George Washington was born in 1727 or 34. Wow. I mean, you know, what a special country, USA, to really, you know, earmark that one day. But let's talk about when I came here, I just wanted to be engineer and sales together kind of thing. But then I said, you know what, let me see what I could do in sales and marketing and motivation. So I got into that. But then we started, I've been married 43 years this year. And we live near San Francisco, close to you, Tiffany. Yeah. But the big thing is, I just wanted to see real estate because everybody in my circle was in real estate 43 years back when we moved here and we were buying our very first home for, we didn't have much money, $99,000. You know, we bought it at very high interest rate, 14.3 quarter percent per year. Wow. But you're right. What I've changed just to bring it to you right now, 15, 16 years back, we just looked at our portfolio of single family homes, Tiffany, and we found we were not making that much cash flow. I mean, management company and contract, you know, these broken down things and all that took away most of the cash flow. So that's when I got introduced to how to overcome that by not having too much money. You know, we didn't have money actually. Uh, we had some money, let's say. But the key thing is how to harness the money of our family and friends and people we know and in their retirements, how to legally put them together into a vehicle so that we could raise money and invest that money into whatever companies we want, whatever real estate we want, whatever opportunities come on in our way to be able to harness that money and then give amazing returns to investors. So that's what I've been involved in. And that's my crusade is, you know, to get more and more investors to really give them amazing returns, tax benefits and all that. So the main thing you're doing right now is, you know, you have your your projects and multifamilies and the the nursing. um, Assisted senior livings, hotels, startup companies, all these Bitcoin mining. I mean, you name it. I have so many 19 businesses now that I'm investing in. I'm on the boards and other things like the cybersecurity, I forgot. And then QuickBooks, Scarlet Books with artificial intelligence, all those things, yeah. And you still, despite all of that, you're still are going straight to the people on the ground level and teaching. Right. And you have the books and the courses yes. where you can help the person who's like, I don't know, I want to, I have this 401k I could borrow from, or I have this IRA that I can make, you know, self-directed and do something. You yes. can help people. Yes. Take that currency and put it somewhere that's going to grow. 
right? That is so true, Tiffany. It's amazing. Very, very rich people. I have talked to, you know, and they say, really, really, I can take my retirement fund from the Wall Street and put it in a self-directed. You're telling me my 401k can bring me 18% returns, uh, you know, with tax benefits, which REITs are there on the Wall Street, but they don't give you the K1, which is negative cash flow, right? So that is what I'm on a crusade to kind of share that knowledge with the as passive investors and also teach other people. So that's what that academy and the books I'm writing. My third book is almost ready. Thank goodness. Senior Living Investing Made Easy. And my fourth week will be coming also. But I just have that side of me. I have so much time, you know, at my hand. So anyway, <laughs> it's How good. How do you have so much time, Vinny? So tell me, okay, so tell me about your processes. Like, what does your work week look like? How have you been able to build this empire and be multi multi-millionaire? And first of all, still care the way you do and be a, you're a lifelong learner and absolutely wow. do it. But how do you manage your week? Because I think there's always an excuse, the limiting belief that someone says, okay, great. So Vinny just said, I can take 50 grand out of my 401k because it's worth a hundred grand and I can help, you know, invest in real estate, but I'm so busy. I, I can't figure it out. How does someone like you run your week where you can collapse time and get things done and be as productive as you are? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Tiffany, it all builds on the systems, to be very truthful. And our daughter is involved fully in our business. My wife was, she's retired now. She's playing bridge and yoga and all, which is great. But I am a very systematic guy. So I believe in building systems of really productivity and efficiency. So a lot of my businesses, I look for the right horse and the right jockey, I call it. Yeah. So in other words, I'll be on the board of that company, but then I'll be only meeting for maybe every two weeks, one hour only, but I know what's happening. But the people, the CEOs and the vice presidents and everybody, they are doing their work. I just need to know very little about it, you know, because that's where they are good at. In my case with the investors, I have built the funnel and we have like 530 investors now, which only my daughter knows and I know who they are. And we are able to bring them into our deals. Now I have almost 16 to 20 people. Accredited investors are coming through the built systems where we are meeting with them, but I only meet after the fourth visit. So I have people in between that they are able to take them through the whole presentations and everything. So it took me time, yeah. you know? You so time, essentially we are able to do, my calendar is mostly open. Can you believe it? Wow. I mean, I just can make my flexibility of the calendar is so easy for me to do. You know, so that way. So I'm not very superhuman being at all. It's just that I formulated systems. And when I meet with one part of my business in senior assisted living, one day a week for one hour, we can accomplish everything. Yes. In just and, that one hour. And yeah. I bet that you're attracting because of the type of human that you are, you're attracting the right people that you trust completely yes. to run things. Cause I know that's always a rub with, you know, delegating. It's like, oh my gosh, I need to duplicate myself, but no one's going to do it the way that I do it. So how have you found over the years, other than paying them well, cause maybe I'm not even sure if that's, you know, just, you don't necessarily pay somebody a lot of money and then it's all of a sudden good. How do you find the good people that you can trust to do the right job? I'm so glad you're saying that. And I would love to take everybody back to Monil Management Group. I've had in my life two companies before with another partner. Then we started Monil brand, which is Monica and Neil, our kids named together. And we started only seven, eight years back that company where I'm the CEO and we have 16 companies underneath now. No, actually more than that because we did 70, no, yeah, 76 LLCs. So Essentially, what happened is, I'll just go back to, we had 153 people full-time working in our organization of Monil Management Group. 
I always have believed that properties are only good, multifamily or whatever we buy, if the right people are in management and hiring them with a lot of experience has been my cup of tea. I like to bring really the right people and pay them well, pay them really, really good money and bonuses. And like in our company, in the management company, we were giving two bonuses over and above in a year, two bonuses, one in June, end of second quarter, one in November. I wanted to give it in November so that they could enjoy time with the family and the money with vacations or gifts for Christmas. So we ran that, never missed the payroll in our 15 years, never missed a payroll. And we were giving millions of dollars in payroll. But then we were having a full system where each property we purchase, we are running it the payroll with them because properties bring revenues and the tax are paid and the payroll is paid, benefits are all that. So we were running this special company, management company, and the people inside the regionals, the hiring, uh, HR, the accounting departments, the whole thing. So we structured all that mm. so that it was a well-oiled machine yeah. and not a dollar went anywhere. Not a dollar, not a dollar. I can say that even to the penny because we will give the PLs to our investors in pent cents, you know, and right from the software and we had full authenticity, I call it, because every invoice had to be stored in our uh, drop boxes and into our software. So when my investors will look at the whole PNL, millions of dollars coming in the revenue, and we had scanners at our properties in our case. So every check or money order was scanned that day, and that was going into accounting in real time and money collected at the bank level, real time, right from there at the, each property. Wow. So. When you're talking, I'm thinking, how did Vinny figure out? Because yes, you have to have the system. You're paying your people well and you work hard. Then you started working smarter, not harder. And all these things started coming together. Who taught you all the things that you write in your book about money? Because money is an exchange of energy. I know people listening to this right now are saying, okay, like I said, now, well, okay. So he said I could do this and that with my money. Now he had just addressed like, do I need to hire someone? How do I, you know, free up my work week so I'm not busy? But then there's an issue with the way I people think about money and oh, yes. I, you know, pull my money together. I don't trust my sister. I don't trust my mom. I don't trust mm. my neighbor. So where did you get this like baseline for understanding about the energy that comes with money and how to treat it? Oh, thank you, thank you so much. I fired on spot in my company of 154 people, I bet I went through 70 of them. But uh, the thing is the poison in your company, I believe that because I went and did my master's in business administration, how to run corporations and everything. And I'm a very, very shrewd learner. And also I read and I buy courses and get professionals like our property management company, which made us 765,000 net profit. We made just from that company each year. And they were managing all of our assets, by the way. So my investors were gaining so much money too. But what it is, is that you hire the right people to start a company. So I paid very less money, 55,000, I think they quoted me. And a one person who knew how to build the management company flew in, I paid for the hotel and all that. Anyway, I don't want to go there, but she started the whole company from scratch for us and manuals and everything. I bought it. I brought asset managers. And then we got the, you know, very, very good person, vice president of our accounting. She's an investor also into my companies, multimillionaire now. And she was the CPA, just like a CPA almost. And we are so privileged that she's still with us. And I'm on the accounts and she's also and she can write out everything. It's just the trust factor is yeah. so important. 
you know? And did you always know that? Did your parents teach you that? How did you get right with money and you knowing that oh. you pay people well, you invest, uh, oh you invest my gosh, in people. No, you, I you come from a very though. humble beginning, six kids, yeah. mom and dad in one bedroom apartment. And we just had a bicycle. We had no television, no radio. We radio, we had radio, but no cell phones, no refrigerator like that humble beginning I come from. But I did score. I was a studious boy. I learned a lot and I talked in the university or high school actually, got scholarship from the government of India. They paid for my five years of tuition free and gave me stipend also. I don't go into that too much, yeah. but I've been a very studious, goal oriented guy. You know, so when I came to country in USA, I knew that I'll become somebody, but I just thought that I believe in this thing. You know, I would love to share with your audience, if I may. See, this is the future. In the hourglass, the future becomes present right in this neck over here. This is the present and this is the past. So I just bought it recently because I believe in that so much wholeheartedly mind blown i love that it's something visual that's what i love is visual things reminders like that you know something tangible that is amazing thank you thank you tiffany so the thing is we spend so much time and energy in the past and we say why me why did i not do that why didn't i do what i should have done or, you know, all the past negatives come into our mind. Our mind is a devil's workshop. It really is, you know. But if we concentrate on the present right here, that present is the, like Eckhart Tolle's book. I learned so much from it. Power of Now is so important. Miracle Morning with Hal Allrad. I say that all the time, you know. And of course, Magic of Thinking Big from W.J. Schwartz, David J. Schwartz, Dale Carnegie's book, Zig Ziglar, Tom Hopkins. They are my mentors, Tony Robbins. I mean, you know, these are great, great mentors who have taught me, but it's up to me to take what they taught me and implement it. Yes. You know, see, a lot of time people go to seminars, they look at podcasts and all. But I say, are you a better person listening to the podcast before you started listening? And are you becoming a better person? Mindset is huge. In this life, it's 90% mindset. I think 10% is the skills, really. I and really I, believe I that. Think- Charles Swindle talks about it too. Yeah. I remember. Yes. And I think there's a COI, there's a cost of inaction that people don't understand when you're hiding your money and you're keeping it and you're scared who you're going to give it to and you're holding on to it and you're not realizing that it's an investment and that, you know, the cost of inaction is costing you way more than taking the leap and trusting somebody else and giving that money to start the business or to, you know, buy that uh, triplex or fourplex with your family members. But the cost of inaction is so huge every single day when you're not in that middle of the hour yeah. there and you're not in the moment. The, yeah. the pa- time's just flying by and you're it is by. Totally. Every second, every second, we can't change the last three seconds. I mean, I'm just so immersed in this interview because that's the most important thing in my life right now because I want to make sure that I'm in the moment and that's the beauty of compartmentalizing my time. I've had six meetings today so far and it's only 12 o'clock. But the thing is, every meeting I did in India and others and all these and then my brokers, my attorneys, I was just in the moment. Yes. I was just contributing the best I could. And that's where everybody should be standing right there and making it the best possible. Don't worry too much about the future. Future is going to take care of it because future, when we are doing the right things in the present, future will take care of it. Yeah. And then just learn from the past. Learn from the past and make some really tight decisions, disciplines, and to hold ourselves accountable. See, we are the CEO of our life, yes. not the business. We have so many jobs and trusting on my ability to bring jobs and bring value and bring monies and bring revenues in all these companies, right? 
But that's just a small part. The key thing is we need to make sure that we have the right vision. That's the other thing I've been just trying to permeate in all my companies is that you got to have the vision transferred down below. Then every member needs to catch that vision and then be passionate about making it happen. So how can we multiply ourselves? Yeah. And I heard a statistic that I think it was 86% of our thoughts in the day can be negative. Yes. In worst case scenarios, worrying about the future, you know, everything that's in that hourglass that we, that's the unknown yet, like over 98% of it never happens. Never happens. 98% of the negative thoughts and worries of the future never happen. Oh my God. That is wasted present time. And I know, I mean, (laughs) Uh, people, this is where I go get weird on people, but I did plant medicine a few times, ayahuasca. And Mm. I saw very clearly that every single day is a gift. And when I had that like revelation, I saw like trees, flowers growing and all these different colors and things on the plants. And it's a medicine. It's not a drug. People can call it a drug, but it's medicine. But oh my gosh, it was so healing for me to stop worrying about guilt and what I didn't accomplish yet and feeling behind and worrying about what's going to happen in the future. Every single day is a gift. And I couldn't wait to get home and celebrate my daughter's birthday the next day. I was looking at things like, gosh, I got to clean my house and I'm going to do this weirdo plant medicine. How am I going to feel tomorrow? What if I'm depressed? What if this and that? And I was looking at her birthday like a task because I knew her friends were going to come over and I had to clean Mm. and all that. From that, I had the best birthday with her the next day. She didn't have her friends over. We didn't worry about the house getting clean. We went downtown. She's like, mom, this is the best birthday ever because she knew my energy was so present. And it was huge. It it was the best. It was better than me stressing and panicking and cleaning and being grouchy and all of her friends coming over. She didn't want that. She just wanted me to be present with her. And it's just exactly what you're saying. Just highlight in my weird way. I'm yeah. so glad you said it because metaphorically, I really believe that, you know, see, we got to live the life of balance. We are one person only and each role as a father, as a brother, as husband, as a CEO and as vice, you know, a, a director or whatever, and all these things, we got to really live with total fashion, uh, fashion, not fashion. Yeah, I like fashion. Passion and fashion. I love yeah. fashion. You yeah. do it well. <laughs> but passion, it's so important that we immerse ourselves. <laughs> do it with passion or not at all. See, our each person listening to us will be a new person tomorrow or after this interview. Hopefully they are yeah. because all we need to do is let's get a little bit more smiling optimistic, positive, with enthusiasm, we need to really communicate with enthusiasm and with what we want to get done at all in our all roles of life. And we are one person in between. I love the wheel of life, if I may share that. I'm trying to put together getting a cog also yeah. now. And it's a wheel with the little spin spokes spokes i think they're called and each spoke is our you know rating uh, from the center we are at the hub like in life of you know financial our spiritual life our all these and then we put the numbers what we are number from zero to five in a, even in a diagram, we could do it. That's what I've been teaching before. Wheel of life, I call it. So it's like where you are with your positivity. If you are from zero to five at one, then we need to take care of that to move it to four. If we are not passionate about getting up in the morning at the right time, and if in goal setting, we are not at the four or five, we are at zero, or one, I mean, so all these things, and when we join those points together, it will tell us if we are at the right frame of mind or not. So wheel of mindset is what I'm designing out of this wheel of life. It makes it makes so much sense. And I I love that. And it's important to know for like the, the perfectionist in me, when I looked at my wheel and I did the evaluation, I was feeling like, oh my gosh, I need to be balanced at everything. And what I realized is 
for myself, I'll do like I do the 12 week, uh, you know, work year. I'll yeah. do like a sprint, like a three week sprint on making sure I do all my self care. And then maybe something else gets out of balance, but I need to take care of myself and nurture that piece of the wheel. I yeah. don't strive every day to work out and be perfect with business and perfect. Or when I'm taking on a new vision, business venture, like the course that I created, I knew I had to do a 90 day sprint. I told my family, hey, I'm going to be a little disconnected sometimes. I'm going to be getting up in the morning and working yeah. or maybe I'm going to work extra hours. However, after I come out of this 90 and 120 days, I'm going to have so much more time for you and rebalance my wheel. So mm -hmm. that's important for anyone listening, like the perfectionist in us wants to be like perfect at each part of it. Sometimes you balance, you get unbalanced, you rebalance and you work that wheel all the time. Would you agree? You're so right about it, Tiffany. You just reminded me about Stephen Covey's book. I think it's in the eighth habit or seven habits of highly effective people, one of oh, them, yeah. because he talks about his daughter who just gave birth to the baby. And I remember distinctly because her daughter came to Stephen Covey and said, Dad, I'm in a turmoil, you know, because of my appointments with the calendar and the true north is the compass. So Stephen Covey kind of talks about, it's the calendar of what you have, all appointments and all the business deals and everything going on right over here. And there is a compass to live your night, uh, live to the North. So what he said in that juncture, because the baby was born, he says, throw away the calendar, but just do everything in the true North for the baby. In your case, just now, you are doing the right thing because now you are saying your kids have grown up and they can, you know, take care of everything, you know, and all. But as a mom, you really set the stage correctly. Yeah. And now you'll be consumed with your calendar, which you're doing. But that calendar is going to be pointing to the true north. So the true north can be in the family life side. True north can be on the calendar side. And that's what it is. See, your true north right now, which is to the calendar, to your appointments and uh, recordings and everything and designing the best of the best program, all that, you know? So yeah. the, the universe works in mysterious ways because I was just it does. On, I was just on Facebook looking at something for my ads and I just, something popped up, Dr. Christine Nordcup, and mm. she has a podcast and it's true north. Oh. And I was like, Wait, that sounds interesting. I want to know more about that. I'll do that after I get off the podcast with Vinny. And here you are talking about True North. So I don't know how that aligns or what that means, but I'm going to go back and and and, and look at that. That really okay. meant a lot to me because wow. in my life, just like anybody's life, we have so many stresses, strains. You know, people want time, yes and no, all that. I remember uh, Stephen Covey's book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, came to my rescue. And then as I was going through it, it really opened up my mind and everything and de-stressed me. Then I bought his eighth habit, you know, was the book. I think that's probably where he talks about the calendar and the true north compass. Wow. And that was so amazing. I remember 30 years back, I think, you know, I still remember that. See, and I practice it because the thing is, you got to really look at yourself as one human being and don't be a perfectionist. I used to be a perfectionist, but then I said, you know what, if I'm going to be perfectionist, it's going to take away so many other opportunities that I won't be able to look at. So it's great to be close to perfectionist, but don't worry about, just look at A, Bs and Cs. I look at always in my priorities and D, E and F, delegate them or don't worry about them. If they are F, you don't even need to look at them. Yes. That's how I look at it, you know? So those things. But um, no, true north, I feel you got me excited now again. I'm going to go ahead and look at and read up again on true north. <laughs> yeah, it's funny that that just came up. But Vinny, you never cease to amaze me. I absolutely love you. You are just a wealth of knowledge, but you're such a kind human. So how do people get in touch and find more of Vinny? You know, Vinny is all over on the internet. Vinny Chopra, V as in Victor, I... N-N-E-Y, Chopra, but my team also got Vinny, V-I-N-N-I, 
Chopra also, oh, and all these different variations. So you could just Google me. I have a big YouTube channel. I've been broadcasting 10 videos a day. My team is now answering questions from passive investors and my students and my vinichopra.com. My senior living investing made uh, easy book is coming out. Apartment syndication made easy book is on Amazon. And my positivity brings profitability is there. Then and my you portfolio. got quite a TikTok, Vinny. <laughs> yeah, TikTok too. Don't forget yeah. about your TikTok because I think yeah. that's going to be your number one moneymaker pretty soon. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank so thank you. Thank you for really what you are doing. I'm so proud what you are putting together. And, you know, we have talked about it. I think it's just so great to teach other people how they could really excel in their business. And I'm so, so fortunate to know you because you are building that course together with Krista and this beautiful, beautiful, uh, all the accolades to you and all the positive vibes and I'll be biggest promoter of that. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Vinny. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Again, we'll meet again. And, uh, you know, I know Bo is putting together the beautiful uh, in-person, probably in Oakland. We yes. are still looking for location coming up uh, later on. And you're Thank local, you're right. I'm local. So we'd love to meet a lot of, uh, you know, your uh, you know followers and my followers one-on-one. -on -one. We'll be, be there. Minutes of 15 minutes. Okay. They will be able to, you know, they will be able to really uh, hear your passion, what you're bringing to them in a later stage, not right now, but sharing with them educational. And I'll send you my brochure. I just perfected it yesterday, a revised, uh, you know, uh, version of it. It's a Monil educational brochure. So we give it to our passive investors and I go over a PowerPoint presentation also with them to teach them and share with them what Winnie does, what my companies do, how we bring deals. And we don't just bring deals. Everybody brings. We bring the best of the best underwritten deals, right? Yeah. And then they can see the track record of people and what the investors are take, talking about me and so on. I write yeah. my companies. That's what we do in the investor side. And then same thing with student side. We share with them how academy where it's a university that we have built over the years and people are going through the academy and raising millions of dollars yeah without even talking to me i love it oh, so so it cool. means I, we are providing them the tools that they are being successful well you know? i can't wait to invest Ah, so. uh, no, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And a lot of your contacts, you know, like we talked, you know, and uh, there is a GP position, general partnership. We call it fund of a fund, legal way, because SEC does not allow uh, me, syndicator, to pay commissions for raising money. So there is nothing in that sense. You have to be a broker dealer, mm -hmm. have these special things to be able to get paid commission to raise money. SEC is looking at it again, but it hasn't finalized yet. But we could raise money with your circle who are amazing, amazing people who would like to get higher returns yeah. legally. And then we do fund of a fund. So in other words, all the people that come under your circle, they will be investing into this fund. And then that fund will invest into my deals, which... 2023 and 24 are going to be the biggest years ever, ever, ever in the commercial real estate. Wow. It's kind of like what it was seven and eight and nine. It's that kind of thing is happening. Just mm -hmm. listen to anything, watch an economic report with the interest rates going higher. The mortgages have gone through the roof yeah. and the properties that people paid a lot of money for they cannot survive unless they have a lot of money injection from their own pockets into to pay uh, to avoid foreclosures is yeah. the word because people will be able to you know do that uh, let me uh, no really exciting to meet with you Tiffany oh, I love uh, it. my friend yes. Melissa is just calling 
Yeah, okay. from Florida. I'll let you go. Thank you so much. Vinny. Thank you so Bye. much. All Thank right, I'll get this ready. It's such a great on. opportunity to be on your show. Let me know, and you know, we'll promote it on both angles. Your podcast, my podcast, and we'll make awesome. reels and we'll do all the good stuff, Tiffany. Thank Let's you. Do it. Thank you. God bless you. you. Bye. God bless you. you. Bye bye. Bye bye.